morning to everyone. Today is Tuesday, January the 18th, and it is good to be with you another morning. I'm thankful for the rest I got last night. Hopefully you had good rest last night as well. just want to share with you a few uh, prayer needs, prayer requests, before we begin looking again this morning in John chapter 14. Um, I learned yesterday that Rhonda Link, her brother who lived in Nashville, passed away of COVID, and so just be praying for the Link family as they're, uh, I'm sure, devastated by, by their loss. And just pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit in them. James Wiseman is having his surgery today, this afternoon, to repair, I believe it's his tibia. And uh, so be praying for him. Pray for Wanda. Uh, she informed me this morning that James would be going to rehab for some time after that. And she will not be able to see him. So be praying for James today and pray for Wanda. Also, Barbara's going to be having her cancer surgery tomorrow. So we want to pray for Barbara. And today, Vanessa is having her final chemo treatment. Um, and so we're thankful for that. She'll be having surgery on February the 3rd, so be in prayer for Vanessa, and I think she's going to be having radiation treatment following that. So a lot of things to pray for. Uh, continue to lift each other up, encourage one another. Um, I hope you're connected to a small group and you have a group around you that can uh, that you can minister to and they, they can minister uh, to you as well. Be praying for Constantine and Leah, the Petresca family. So many, so many prayer needs. Uh, I want to encourage you to be a part of our Next Generation service this Sunday morning. We're celebrating uh, the fact that God has done a unique thing here and continues to keep a multitude of generations together. So let's start off with, uh, you probably have realized this is about my favorite old hymn, I believe. It's Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, and this is my song. Praising my Savior. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst in my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Praising my Savior 
giving him praise all day long. I, I, I love what the Apostle Paul said, I believe in the book of Colossians or Galatians, I can't remember. But he said, whatever you do and all that you do, whatever you do, do everything to the glory of God. And that means everything that we do um, can glorify God. Uh, sometimes we think of giving God glory just in those Christian things that we do. But everything, uh, everything that we do, every breath that we take, every action that we have, every thought that we have, we can bring glory to God in that. And so that's my encouragement to you today. Just, just everything you do, praise Him all day long. Well, chapter 14, we got through about verse 11 yesterday. And this is where Jesus is uh, encouraging them to not let their hearts be troubled because of the, the bad news in their perspective that he was going to be leaving them and they would learn that he was actually going to the cross. He was encouraging them. He, he um, said, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then Philip begins to question, where are you going? And then verse 12, Jesus says this, Truly, truly, I say to you, when, whenever we see that, that double phrase of, of truly, truly in Scripture, it, it, it's giving the emphatic. It's, uh, it, it's kind of putting an, putting an exclamation point. So he's, he's repeating that. Truly, truly, I say to you, um, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Now, let's back up and break that down just a little bit. Jesus says, whoever believes in me. We saw on Sunday we were talking about Manasseh that, that that no one can ever go too far that they're not able to be saved. And here Jesus repeats that same idea. Truly, truly, whoever believes in me, um, whoever, God has uh, so desired and does desire, it's his desirous will that all would come to know his son, Jesus Christ. And there is no one, no one, no one who is not able to be saved. And God says, whoever believes in me. Now, this word believe is not just the idea of having a cognitive belief in Jesus. The Bible says that demons believe, yet they tremble. But it carries the idea of believing that we would place our faith and trust in Christ not just trust him to give us a good life and all of those things, but to trust the work that he did in order to save us. You see, there's absolutely nothing that you and I can do to save ourselves. I was talking with yesterday, someone yesterday, and we were talking about that passage in Isaiah where he says that our righteousness before God is like filthy rags, that anything we would try to do to be right before God, to be righteous before God is not enough. It could never be enough. Only the shed blood of Christ is able to atone for our sins. And that salvation comes where we trust the work that Christ has done by shedding his blood as a payment for our sins. So Jesus says, whoever believes in me, then he says this, will do greater works than these, uh, will do greater works than I have done. Uh, because I am going to the Father. Now, a lot of people misunderstand this, this statement that Jesus, and of course they're taking that out of context. Some believe that, that what Jesus was saying, that the miracles that he did, that we can do greater miracles. That has nothing to do with what Jesus is talking about here. Jesus is speaking of this work of salvation. Why did the Son of God came? Jesus said himself, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. We know that Jesus came to be submissive to the will of the Father. In James, the Bible tells us that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Now, ultimately what that work was, was to cause separation and sin uh, to, between mankind and God. And so Jesus is saying here that the, the, the works that I have done, the works that, that you have seen me in this saving work, greater works will you do, the one who believes in me, than I do. Now, the question is, why? Why would we be able to do greater works? Well, the answer is very simple, and it's found in this passage, that Jesus himself was one man, fully God, yes, but fully man as well. And that when he was crucified and he was buried and raised 
to, from the dead, and he ascended to the Father. We remember that it was at that time that he gave the Holy Spirit of God uh, to those who would believe. And so you and I all have the Holy Spirit not only working around us, but working through us as well as he lives and dwells in us. And these works that Jesus is talking about are works that can only be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. And of course, we know that in, in, the, in the saving of an individual, the saving of one, it requires the Holy Spirit of God to do the regeneration. You and I cannot convince anybody of the Christian faith. We just don't have the ability to convince someone. This is a work that only the Holy Spirit of God can do. And so Jesus is saying that, that you're going to do greater works. And we've seen after 2,000 years of human history, just incredible spread of Christianity and those who would trust Christ, the, the millions upon millions who have trusted Christ throughout human history and are now uh, with him, uh, saved for all of eternity. So then he says this in verse 13, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now, again, we have to see this in context. Jesus is not talking about whatever whim we would desire. He's not giving a blank check to say whatever we claim in his name because we've requested it, that he's going to give it to us. No, number one, it has to be in accordance with the will of the Father. And again, what Jesus is speaking of here is his kingdom and those who would come to Christ, be saved through him. And so he's saying, listen, if we pray and ask, God will work and move in that. I, I am convinced, based on the Word of God, that any person that you and I pray for, that we ask God to save them, God the Holy Spirit will work in their hearts to draw them. Now, there's the volition of that person's will, where they must trust what Christ has done. God doesn't violate that. But he will answer that prayer. So if you're praying for somebody today to be saved, confidently I can say that this is the will of the Father. He desires that none should perish but all come to eternal life. So we know he's going to answer that prayer. He's going to bear on the heart of that individual. So pray, pray, pray for those that you're desiring to see saved and be in eternal life with Christ. Then in verse 15 he says this, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, right? If we love God, if we love Christ, we'll obey his commandments. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission, go and make disciples, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. And so uh, salvation, the result of salvation is a desire to obey his commandments. Now, we are not perfected on this side. Uh, we are in him positionally, but you and I, uh, we will struggle with this thing called sin until the day we go with Jesus. After that, we'll get our glorified bodies and we'll del be delivered from those things. However, in this life, we will continue to fail. But he, he gives a promise here that, that, um, that the, the expression of our love for him is that we have a desire to be obedient to him. I always like to say that's the first indication of somebody being, a, being saved. They desire to do what Christ um, has commanded. Then verse 16, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, here is the promise that he says, that he's going to send us another helper, the Holy Spirit of God. He will be with you and he will dwell in you. We, we call, uh, the Holy Spirit is called the, the helper, the paraclete, the one that comes alongside. We're going to look more at the Holy Spirit in the following verses. But the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, not third in the sense that he's less than, he is fully God. Uh, there's fully God the Father, fully God the Son, fully God the Holy Spirit. All three distinct separate individuals yet one one god in three persons and so the holy spirit every attribute that we have uh, related to the father the holy spirit has every attribute we see in scripture related to the son the holy spirit has 
often a neglected person of the Trinity. Uh, but we cannot, we cannot function, uh, we cannot live the Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit of God. That's why Paul exhorts us in Ephesians chapter 5 to, to uh, continually, daily be filled with the Holy Spirit. There is that filling and the sealing of the Holy Spirit at salvation. Every person who's born again receives the Holy Spirit. There's not some second work later to come. That's just not what Scripture teaches. I know my Pentecostal brothers and charismatic friends believe that there's this second work called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but that is not found in Scripture. That We are given the Holy Spirit when we are born again, and it's by the indwelling presence and power of the Holy Spirit that we're able to live the Christian life. So I want to encourage you this morning. Call on the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. That word that Paul uses there in Ephesians chapter 5 means a continual filling, to be filled and filled and filled, yielded to the Holy Spirit of God. I pray the Lord blesses you today and that as you are praying for the, for the filling, the yielding of the Holy Spirit of God, that he would give you wisdom and discernment that you might see those that the Father's drawing and that you'd be empowered to plant a seed of the gospel in their hearts, and their lives. And as you planted the seed of the gospel, that God would give you wisdom to, to see how to cultivate a seed maybe that's already been planted there. And if God, by his grace, would allow us to witness somebody be saved today, that would make a great day. Or pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. Uh, I was reminded by, um, uh, by Joan Moss to be praying for her and Ken as well. We've mentioned them several mornings. Uh, but be praying for one another. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. Have a great day.